My name is Frank Kuppers. I'm Sales and Alliance Manager for Libella LLC and I'm the host for today. Together with me we have Bernd Bayer who will do the presentation and also later on Vamsi. Vamsi will continue the live demo and also handle the question and answers after we have finished the demonstration. So please feel free to use this question feature in your GoToWebinar control panel to post any questions you may have and then we will address these later on. Okay, so looking at the highlights, what are you going to expect from today's webcast? We will show you how Libella automates system refreshes with pre-copy and post-processing phases. Of course, you will also understand or get an understanding of how you can standardize tasks and procedures using our tool. We will show you new features in our newest version, Libella System Copy version 2.2.5 and also give you highlights about things that we optimize in our tools. For instance, how we can dramatically accelerate um, BDLS tasks how we can provide consistent results across your landscape and at the end of course we will address the questions from the audience. Okay, looking at the agenda, the first part will be an introduction about Libelle in general. This will be done by our colleague Bernd Bayer. He will also then talk about subsystem refresh process and challenges that you may see during these processes and also inform you about our Libella system copy tool, how we are going to handle the refresh automation. Then Bernd will hand over to Wamsi. Wamsi will show you the live demo of our tool and then also answer your questions. Okay, I will say Bernd, it's all yours now. Please go ahead and start the presentation. Excellent and thank you very much Frank for the introduction. Again, my name is Bernd Bayer. I'm a solution architect with Libelle based in our office in Atlanta. Um, I am in the same location where Wamsi is also located. We're not in the same room today for the webcast, but we are at the same office here in Atlanta. I want to talk about the general SAP system refresh process after I give you a quick introduction on who Libelle is and where the system copy tool came from and then talk to you about the architecture of the system copy tool and basically setting the stage for Wamsi to do his live presentation right after me. Now when we say live demonstration in the past, I did web demos where we show you the graphical user interface of Libella System Copy and run a simulated system refresh. Now, Wamsi is actually doing an actual SAP system refresh. We're not going to do the full process from the beginning to the end, but he's going to show that to you on an actual SAP system, which I think is, is uh, very valuable in terms of how is this working with, with SAP. And again, what Frank mentioned, please use the Q&A feature. We do this for you. This is your time, so we want you to get the most out of it. So anytime you see something where you want to have more information, just type in the question and we're going to address all of them towards the end. So the Libelle company, we have been on the market since the mid 90s, late 90s, as with those specific tools for SAP. Started out with database replication for Oracle with our core tool, it's called DB Shadow. And then just more and more merging into the SAP market by supporting other databases than Oracle. The second database we supported was DB2. MaxDB was the next Microsoft SQL Server. We started support for flat files. And then towards the mid-2000s established ourselves as a solution provider for data replication for SAP. Back then, none of that was targeted specifically for system copy. Even though that we had a database replication tool, the customer used this tool as part of the system refresh uh, project. In 2011, you see that towards the bottom, was the kickoff and the start date for launching the Libella system copy tool and we used a lot of the 
basic framework and libraries we developed over the last 15 years which went into the system copy tool. So we didn't need to start from scratch developing enterprise software. We used a lot of the components which were already there, tested, used at customers and ready to go but adjusted everything for system copy. So system copy is still a brand new tool. It's not that we just used the old tool and twisted it to do something else. It is a new development and the system copy is actually starting at a higher level in terms of the way we approach things professionally, the way we develop our development methodologies. So system copy is the state of the art libelle tool. Um, last year we started uh, DB Shadow for Sybase. So we are focusing on the SAP market. So we also want to follow SAP. Sybase is the database SAP wants to support and we're going to follow SAP with the DB Shadow for Sybase and we're also already supporting system copy for Sybase. We started a couple of initiatives in 2013. Um, the HANA, we started that as a prototype. We have a solution for client copy. We work on a couple of other system copy related tools such as system clones, uh, data scrambling and a couple of other tools which are going to come out probably sometimes in 2014. We are an SAP partner. We also maintain partnerships which all the relevant players in the SAP uh, ecosystem, also non-SAP. Um, for example, our Oracle and Microsoft partnership is also covering non-SAP systems. And we have more than 500 customer sites at this point and both solutions are installed more than 1500 times across the world. Platforms we are supporting is Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, MaxDB, DB2, Sybase and Flat Files. So basically whatever SAP is running on, we support the same. And that includes also the COS and IOS series from IBM in terms of the platforms. And also customer and landscape sites wise, we have small 10 gigabyte databases we are supporting, typically non-SAP. Uh, we have 100, 500, 800 gigabyte SAP systems and our largest single SAP um, system we are supporting for system copy is actually 65 terabytes. And again, most of the installations are SAP. So we are looking at two tools and then we're going to lead into the system copy where it came from. The system copy is the tool to automate the homogeneous system copy process within your SAP landscape. It comes with the um, framework, it comes with the tasks and we're going to talk about that in detail. And then the other tool is called the Libelle, system, Libelle Business Shadow. This is the tool to replicate complete SAP landscapes for disaster recovery. There's a webcast scheduled for tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern where we're going to talk about the other tool. The system copy came out in 2011. We started development in 2009, very late 2009, early 2010 and we are currently at the version 2.2.5 so we went through a couple of iterations. Uh, Libelle actually worked closely with a partner which we later acquired so this is now a Libelle company and they have been doing SAP basis consultants and they had a lot of scripts to automate system copies. However, this is a consulting firm, not a software development firm. Now we are a software development firm but don't have the depth know-how or didn't have it back then in terms of SAP basis. Um, we work together, they develop the tasks, we develop the framework and we did all of that together and this is how the Libelle system copy came into existence. And if you look at it, you're going to see the Libelle strengths of developing code and developing software supporting the same and you're going to see the tasks, they are very specific to SAP and you see this was done by somebody who really knows SAP for some of our people have 20 plus year SAP experience. A quick summary what we did since 2011 and this tool was first launched in Europe. I was doing in the United States a one year delay to just ramp up the resources so we basically kind of advertised it in 2011 but didn't start 
actually marketing and actively win customers since um, after or before 2012. But what we have so far on a worldwide level is more than 100 customers. We have single configurations where a customer has one ECC system and one QAS and doesn't have the resources to do the refresh. And we have other customers, they might have eight production systems and each production system has five targets. And we have a huge number of configurations we are managing within the tool. Also, this can be a small SAP shop, again, with just one ECC system. The currently largest SAP system we are supporting with a system copy is a 65 terabyte ECC system. And it's quite spectacular how the system copy runs for that environment. We have installations covering all Oracle DB2, Microsoft SQL Server, MaxDB. I'm not 100% sure if we do um, Sybase. I know we have a DB shadow for Sybase for replication for the R, but I'm not sure if we have a system copy um, also for Sybase implemented. It is available. It is uh, working, tested, um, no issue there. We did, we did integrate snapshots from network appliance, from EMC, and we also do um, our own copy tool to copy databases. And every single customer, we always saw dramatic improvements in speed, in quality of delivery, and I never heard anything um, other than customers are actually very happy that the way the system refresh process is going after they implemented the tool. So much for the marketing, so much for the introduction. Let's look at the system copy process itself and the challenges we see. So first, a definition. When we talk homogeneous system copy, or when we talk system refresh or system copy, we talk about the homogeneous system copy process. So we are refreshing quality assurance, QAS, or sandboxes with a complete set of production data. So in its current version, it's not a client copy, whereby we do have the option for copying clients only. It is not slicing data, what TDMS is doing. It's a full system refresh. Even that this refresh is not production, it is QoS development, typically non-production, it is still very, very critical to do that. And I was working on a project with Wamsi and they are in a period where they have to focus all their SAP resources on the holiday season, making sure the SAP systems are up and running. At the same time, they have a system refresh scheduled and typically that system re refresh would block most of the resources for two or three weeks at the same time where there are other critical business tasks. So with implementing the system copy, they were able to free up those resources for other tasks whereby Libelle and the tool was taking care of the system refresh. So there are production um, quality improvements for production, even that this is not a production system. Also, of course, the process itself, you need a decent and proper QAS system to support production. So this is, again, not production, but still critical for your SAP um, operation. What we see um, from the process that it can be lengthy, it is typically complicated and there are many, many manual steps involved. When you do manual steps, you are prone to errors and mistakes. So let's assume you have a hundred items on your list you need to execute to do a system refresh. You execute three or four and then you have to wait maybe 20 minutes or half an hour for step five. You typically do other things, you have to come back, you might skip a step, you might not do it exactly the way you were supposed to do it, and the result can be maybe not that dramatic. If it's a critical task, you kind of skip. That could be a dramatic impact. We know that this procedure has to be executed many times. Some customers do a refresh every month and they have basically just people sitting there doing refresh after refresh. The business is demanding more systems for projects. They are demanding um, those systems to be delivered in a faster time frame and we just get to a point where we just have too many resources blocked for that process. It's also necessary 
for every single SAP system. So back in the day when you had one SAP, one QAS, even that the process might have been complicated already, you do it once a year for one system, that's no big deal. But, but looking back at our customers, this one customer with 50 plus different configurations, he's refreshing all the time. And I see customers, <coughs> they have ECC, BI, and they have five other SAP systems. They don't even have the resources to refresh everything else, so they just refresh ECC and BI and tell the business uh, the other systems are not going to be refreshed. And that's not, you might can get away with it, but to support the landscape, everything should actually be refreshed. So, Libelle system copy for refresh automation. I want to introduce the tool we developed. And this is a summary of the different components. So generally, the system copy is a software solution. It runs on the system you want to refresh. It is framework based and the idea is to automate the system copy process from beginning to end for every single SAP application. The components is first of all the server agents and the automation framework. So if you have 200 tasks, you need a mechanism to execute those tasks on the server. The second component, which is often overlooked, is you need to know what tasks you need to execute. And I see system copy tools out there, which is basically a job or batch automation software where you can automate everything but they don't give you the automation tasks. So in order for a complete product and solution, you need both a tool to automate the environment, plus you need the tasks. How do you run BDLS? Which tables do you want to export? How you don't want to do a system refresh? And ideally, that server agent and framework got to match what the tasks are doing on the server. And then the third component, it's kind of a graphical user interface and people say, well, it's not a critical component, but the more I see customers working with the tool, doing refresh, it is actually one of the critical components because here is where everything comes together. This is where you see your four, eight, ten system landscapes and you see all the different configurations and see the process and the status of all your system refreshes completed or in process. So basically, the first bullet point says that the system copy framework is basically encapsulating tasks. So for example, for us, if you want to export a specific user table to keep after the copy, this would be one specific task. And then of course, we have to manage the execution of the task. If you do an export, you got to make sure the export runs on the right table. You got to make sure it is um, the export data is placed somewhere and you've got to verify that it was done properly and then move up to the next task. And then the tasks themselves within the refresh process, there are a couple of task types you want to execute. First is executing ABAP, executing any kind of shell scripts, if it be Unix or even in Windows you have a couple of scripts you want to run for SAP or for example snapshots which you want to automate as well. Exporting or importing database table, that's a lot of um, tasks we are using. And then executing uh, SQL scripts, SAP transactions and have manual breakpoints where you actually uh, wait for a period of time before you move on to the next task. So we might have set up 150 tasks at task 79, we want to stop and let the administrator decide when to continue. And we as a company, we have been developing a task repository and we keep expanding that repository. So we separate the framework from the tasks and now we can develop tasks for specific applications. So if you have ECC on Oracle and um, ARX, you would plug that in into the task repository, you get the tasks out and we give you the 150 tasks which are typically covering 95 to 98% of your system refresh process.
the process itself, I kept talking about those tasks. Before we do the tasks themselves, we are splitting up the process in three different phases. We are doing a pre-processing, we are doing a copy phase, and then we are doing a post-processing phase. So, before you actually do a copy of your production data to the target system, we run this pre-processing task. And in this pre-processing task, we take your target system and we export most of the data we want to keep, or technically all of the data we want to keep, like user tables, configuration tables, and so on. I'm we going to show you that on the system. And then the second step would be a copy phase, where you or we would provide a copy of your production data. That can be a snapshot, that can be um, a database backup and restore, it could be a Libella database copy, but you need to find a way to copy production data to your QAS server. Talking about snapshot, you saw in the beginning that we are, for example, a network appliance partner, and I want to make it very clear that we are not competing with the snapshots or against the snapshots. We actually encourage customers to use snapshots because they sit perfectly in this copy phase and we can have the pre-processing and post-processing operating on SAP right before and after. So snapshots are perfectly complementary to our system copy solution. And then we go ahead and take the tasks and assign them to the different system copy bases. A different perspective on this copy phase or a highlight on the copy process. You see again the pre-processing, you see the post-processing, and then in the middle you see how you can actually copy data from production to QAS. You can do backup restore, you can use Snap Manager, you can use EMC, IBM snapshots, or <coughs> if you don't have any of those, we can also provide our own copy tool, which is creating a database copy on the fly. and all of that can be integrated. So there can be no copy tasks, meaning you do a backup and restore and you just do that manually as you did before, or there can be 10, 20 different copy tasks which are triggering, for example, Libelle or triggering a snapshot. One interesting aspect of these copy tasks is that they also can be automated within the system copy framework. So Mamsi, and he's going to talk later about the tool itself, did an integration where we had three different systems, ECC, EI, and SCM, and we copied all of them with the Libella DB copy tool, and we synchronized the point in time recovery for three systems to the same timestamp. So you refresh your production environment, and you have all the systems synchronized among the different components within SAP and then again the post-processing. The core tasks, um, and again this is just different angles looking at the same process. We have pre-processing, we have copy, and we have post-processing. In the pre-processing phase we are exporting data from the existing QAS which we want to keep. We then copy production data to the secondary um, environment, which is your QAS system. So we basically have an identical copy between production and QAS, and then we re-import data, which makes this QAS database an actual QAS database without any references uh, to production unless we want those references in there. One more architecture slide. All of that's going to come together nicely when Ramsey is showing you the system copy front end. In the beginning, the first version of system copy was always one source system, one target system. Now, in the meantime, we figured out there are a lot of customers who have a fairly distributed landscape. So they have their central instance on one server, the database server on another server, and then they have a satellite system which might also have certain critical tasks to be executed and we developed in the version 2.0 this support for distributed systems where you can have multiple systems which are in charge for 
um, certain parts of the system refresh procedure. Those systems can be within the same um, configuration. So in this case, this is all related to, for example, ECC. The server agents and those server masters can also communicate among each other. So let's say you have ECC and you have EI and you have SCM. You can actually automate it in a way that ECC system copy and BI system copy and SCM system copy, they are all getting synchronized and waiting for each other to finish depending on what you want to do in that process and process and how you want to have your process set up and configured. That goes also back to what I mentioned in the beginning. This is a framework-based solution. If you have a standard SAP environment, not too much customization, we basically deliver the standard tasks, implement the standard tasks, and, and we are done. If you have a complicated environment, if you have a lot of things which are non-standard, all of that can be added either by us and you together, or you can even add your own tasks simply by creating additional tasks within the framework. This is the architecture summary, and I want to talk to that briefly before I hand over to Wamsi to do the live demonstration. So we have the three phases I talked about, pre-processing, copy, and post-processing. We have the tasks themselves, which are sequentially, in the, and actually, one of the points Wamsi is probably pointing out, those tasks can also be executed in parallel within the same phase. But let's just look at them as a sequential period of steps. So you have the phases, you have the tasks assigned to specific phases. Those tasks are provided by either the Libelle default task repository, which is managed and updated by Libelle, or you have your own tasks or you have your own repository. If you look at large organizations, you can maintain your own repository. On that, we have the, um, on the left, the production server. You don't have to install Libelle on your production server. If you do so, we have the option to communicate with the master agent. We can have a couple of sanity checks comparing production with the target system, but some customers say, let's just skip those tasks. Um, I just don't want anything installed on my production system and it's perfectly fine with us. So all the action is happening on my stage server. Here we have what we call a master agent. This is where the tasks are getting executed. This is where the configuration is kept for all different tasks. Here we communicate to production or to other systems, communicate with the graphical user interface which you see on the bottom right side, and this is also where we send out notification. So if the system process, system copy, refresh process hits an error at step 79, you can configure it to send out emails that you don't have to babysit the GUI for the time of the system refresh. With that, um, I want to get ready to hand this over to Wamsi and look at the actual live system copy environment he prepared for today's presentation. So, Bumsi, I'm going to hand over the presenter role to you. should get the confirmation in a second. And all the attendees should get the Bumsi screen in a little bit. Thank you, Ben. So, I'm Vamsi. I've been doing Clibele system copy or refreshes for the last three years using the system copy tool. And uh, today I will be giving a live demo of the tool. I will explain a little bit about the, the tool. I will explain a little bit about the file system. And then I would try to execute a live uh, system copy. I would try to execute the pre-exports and show you uh, in the file system how it look li looks like uh, all the export files and uh, the size of the export files and things like that. So let me first go ahead and uh, show you the tool from the, the file system level. The tool runs as, a, uh, as an agent on both source and target systems. 
if you see I have here two systems SL1 and SL2. SL1 is my source system and SL2 is my target system and I would be now copying over the data from SL1 to SL2. Before doing that I would like to export all my configurations from SL2 which would be my preface. So if you look at the uh, LSC processes that are running. So I have here LSC process running. In fact, there are three running here, but my process is this one, which is running as SID ADM, which should be the case. So all the LSC processes, they will run as SID ADM so that it, they have the right permissions to execute SAP related uh, binaries like R3 trans. It's the same case in the source system as well. So I have here the binary running as source SID, which is SL1 ADM. It's not mandatory to have LSE installed on the source system, but it would be nice to have LSE installed on source system so that we can get a complete uh, utility of the tool. Now going back to the uh, graphical user interface which is used to manage the tool, I have here already a configuration SL1, SL2 demo and uh, all the configuration setup is done in this setup window. So I would try to explain you each uh, component briefly. In the general tab you would have the configuration name the location where the configuration is getting stored, which is LSC master, typically it would be your target system. In my case, it's Sapora L2. And the port on which the configuration can be accessed. And then we go to the systems. There are two systems listed out here, Sapora L1 and L2. L1 being the source SAP and source DB, and L2 being the target SAP and target DB. Now if I go into each system, I have to configure each system thoroughly. So each system has its roles defined here, target SAP and target DB for Sapora L2. And if we scroll down the list, uh, the new feature in this latest version of 225 is parallel processing, which would execute tasks in parallel. And currently we are only focusing on executing R3 trans tasks in parallel. So we are using 10 parallel threads, which means 10 R3 trans processes can be triggered at one time once. And then we provide the appropriate SAP data. We have here system type configured as ECC system name, name as SL2, which is a SID. And this system is a dual stack system, so we have to also give the Java instance directory, which is uh, the part mentioned here, and the instance profile file. And then we have to provide the client's information, which, whichever clients uh, we think are relevant. By default, we want to use 000 client. Uh, that is because it holds the uh, transport configuration. But if you have any additional clients, we could configure them here and try to uh, copy them. And then we provide the database information here. We, we only need to provide the database name and home directory. We don't need the username and password because we work directly at the schema level. So we access your database using the schema owner and schema password. And the same for Java stack, schema and Java stack. We provide the same information for Sapora L1 and Sapora L2. And if for some reason you don't want to execute any tasks on a particular system which is configured, we could uncheck this option, execute tasks on this system, which would then prevent LSE from executing any tasks on that particular system. Then we have defined or classified our tasks into different categories. Instead of deactivating tasks one by one, we could just deactivate it as a category. So currently we have 
we have deactivated here standard BDLS tasks and we are only using BDLS scripts which is our uh, our uh, own version of executing BDLS and then we are using standard libla copy so you could have a bird eye view of the system copy tasks that are being executed and not being executed and then copy tool is the uh, libelic copy tool, the DB shadow tool, which is uh, which can be used to copy the database from source to target. And then comes the tasks here. We're not going to talk in detail about tasks, but I can show you uh, how a tasks uh, look like. So each task has some attributes. Each task is having a uh, UID unique identifier and each task will have some name and description what the task is doing and when the task is client dependent for example if you want to ex execute this task for a particular client you can check this box and say task is client dependent and you want to execute for 100 and you can categorize the tasks if you have your own categories you can define your category here or you can select an existing category which we have defined and these are the attributes for the task so you have the task activated and it's in a check phase and the exact location is 4 and the task type is an SQL type task it is supposed to execute on source DB on target DB and each task can have some parameters which can be used to program the task and you can define your own return codes so return codes in the sense so what is the value that you will look into the log file to make the task feel that it is successful or to, to have it as a success code. So here you can define your own success codes and return codes. But most of the tasks that are libelle standard, they come with predefined success codes. Code we cannot obviously see here because you will be logging in as administrator, but I can log in as developer and show you the code. And execution files are the files that you will get after the task get executed. So let me just go ahead and get some tasks that have been executed successfully. So I'm checking here both on SL1 and SL2 if LSE is running. So LSE is running, so I'll go to this directory. I'm going to the directory where the executions stay. So if you could see the size of the directories, so in the previous we have we are exporting approximately 70 meg of data, but this is not completed. It's still executing the tasks here. So we are still waiting for the task to finish off. And if you go to the pre-phase. each and every task that gets executed will have a directory created for it and in this directory you will have the data files so let me go into one of those directories and you could see the data file this is the file which will hold the actual data which is exported and if we look at the log file
so this is a standard R3 trans log file that gets generated and you could here clearly see the complete log generated by R3 trans and if the task is ended with success it will show up here task ended with success I would try to execute the tasks now with the tool I will stop the complete process once and then start it once again so I will stop the uh, agents here in the quick addition to that process so when I got it right and Monty correct me if I'm wrong but we are trying to just speed up the things we can show otherwise we would just let it finish is that correct yes yes I would I would like to uh, show up the uh, complete execution from start to end so I would just like to uh, stop the process and start it once again You had a typo in Crep. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and start the agent here. It will start reading the configuration files and it will say configurations load done and now I will start the GUI, LSC GUI 225 so I'm connecting to the master server which is Sapora L2 this time I will connect as developer just to show you the code So it will take some time to read the configuration from the uh, server. And also a quick addition on my end, what I was seeing at customers, WAMC is doing a lot on the system, but typically what I see at customers, 90% of the system refresh is done through the GUI. Only if you do things like what WAMC is doing now, changing roles or really doing something more in depth, you can work directly on the server but most of the action is on, on the graphical user interface. I've just switched to configurations here. I want to use a different configuration instead of uh, the one that I initially planned to use. So currently the system copy is stopped at check phase so if you could see here I have interrupted the pro progress here and I would like to uh, continue the progress of the uh, system copy here so I can right click and say continue system copy and it would execute the steps here
So the process hits a lot of errors and if we would like to see the log files here we could clearly see that this task is getting executed on the L2 which is the target system and if you look at the log file it says kernel release is this one and it will try to compare it against the log file of the uh, source system. So this, these features are new here, the data file, uh, the debug file is a new feature that is being added into 2.2.5 version. It will help the development team to look into the errors and figure out what exactly happened from the server side, if at all, server is not responding or doing what it is intended to do. And this, this debug feature is, is a new addition to the version 2.2.5. And if you look at the log file here, it gets the work cross runtime parameter and it defines what is an OK level and when it is an OK level it would say the task ended in success. The reason why most of the tasks here are read being is because the SAP system is turned off on the target side. The, only the SAP, not database, which means we could still run all our exports, which is what I want to do. I would still try to run all the exports and it would still do the exports as you see here. It is doing the exports and the new feature in this version is the exports are happening in parallel. And if you look at the file system here, this is the target system and there are multiple R3 trans processes that are triggered which are doing the exports from the system. So even though SAP is not up and running, we only use R3 trans to do most of the exports. Apart from user exports, all other exports are standard R3 trans exports. So we don't need the SAP up and running. But in this case, the SAP system is turned off. So we have to do the exports from database level. And that is still working out. So as you see, the export tasks are happening in parallel and they are now finished. And if you look at the log files, the same log files which I have showed from the file system level, you could see them here. And if you look at the log file, it's the standard R3 trans log. And our way of looking at the success code is looking at this return code here, end of transport, and also we look at or parse these return codes, ETW000, as success codes. And this yellow task is the one which, the task which ended in warning, and if you look at the log files, you could clearly analyze why it ended with warning, even though we take this as success code which is which should be obviously green but if you go and scroll up the list here we see a couple of tables which are not existing in the system for example VRSX5 and we take ETW109 as a warning code so that is how we define the return codes and based upon the return codes the the framework will analyze the log file and display it appropriately. So we are done with the exports and the exports, all the exports happened in parallel. So this is uh, one of the new additions and uh, bringing a lot of value uh, on speed to the process. And I would like to talk uh, about our BDLS process in particular. I will not execute the BDLS step, but I can definitely show you the tasks and steps that we perform in BDLS. So our BDLS task is split up into four tasks, unlike the standard SAP task where you identify and you update the tables in one go. We have split up the process 
So what we do in our first step, the BDLS IDNT task, is to identify the relevant tables that need to be updated. And the second step is to create indexes on those tables. The way that we look at creating indexes is to generate the list of tables which have huge number of entries and then create index. So the list keeps on changing dynamically depending upon the usage of the database. So it's not a fixed list that we take and we create indexes. The list is created on the fly. And then we create indexes on the list. And again, creating indexes, it's up to you to define how many entries should be the threshold level. So would you like to have indexes created for all tables which has more than 100,000 entries or more than 1 million entries? You could define that in the tool here, in the parameters. You can say, I want to create indexes which has uh, for, for tables which has rows more than 1 million entries. And then, this is the sequential update. So if your database is a small database, then we would suggest you to go with the sequential update. We also have the parallel update task. So the split task here, LBDLS split, it will split the list of tables identified. And then it would pass these files that are split each SQL process. So if you say you want to split the file into five, if you want to split the list into five different list files, you could split them into five list files and pass each file to a separate SQL plus process. And the reason why our BDLS works much faster is because we do most of our work here in identify and index create. In identify, what we do is we identify a list of tables and we sort them in descending order. So by doing that, we identify the tables and we also identify the tables which has no values at all. In most of the cases, going, going by my implementation experience, in most of the cases you would be hitting around 1,700 to 2,000 tables that need to be updated that are qualified to be updated, but when we actually sort them in descending order, you only have 400 or 500 tables which has some entries in them. Rest of the tables are zero entry tables. So our process will focus only on those 400 or 500 tables and work on them, whereas the standard SAP process will not do in that way. So in that way, we are focusing on roughly around 35 to 40 percent of the tables which are really really that need to be updated and obviously the other thing which is uh, bringing more value is we work directly at database level whereas SAP works from application layer firing off uh, native SQL scripts so that is that is the major reason why our BDLS works faster than the standard SAP or BDLS. So I would I would love to discuss all the tasks in detail, but if you have any questions, you could just go ahead and uh, put them in the Q&A session now. And uh, as I said, we are done with the pre-exports. Uh, this is very a small database, 60 gig, 60 gig database, and we are through our pre-phase in less than five minutes, exporting all the relevant data. And if you would like to have a look at the uh, file system, you, I could quickly show that file system to you and we could uh, then open the Q&A session. So this is the file system and you could see the all the exports and the size of those exports here.
So pre has around 81 meg of exports. Because it's a empty system which is uh, just used for test purposes. So that is quite small, but I have seen the pre phase exporting around 4 gig of data from the uh, database before we do the database copy. So I hope I have answered or I've shown you uh, enough of the tool doing a live demo. Sorry for that uh, small uh, technical glitches I had with the other configuration. I had this one as a backup configuration just in case that didn't work. And uh, this one looks okay. And the reason why you have check face red again is, uh, as I said, the SAP is turned off on the, uh, only the SAP R3 is turned off on the target system. So I would hand over now the uh, control to Bernd and uh, ask him to open the Q&A session so that we could just go ahead and uh, answer your questions if you have any. Thank you very much, Ramzi. This is Frank again, our host. Um, I have some questions received during the session and I just start up firing the first. Um, the question is, how difficult is it to set up my own tasks? Ramzi, can you answer this? Yeah. Yes, uh, setting up your own tasks, it should not be difficult because as our as we see, uh, most of our tasks are uh, RT trans tasks and we already have the most all all variants of tasks as templates so when when we are doing the initial implementation we would obviously provide you base templates which you can use and build upon your own tasks we would assist you in building upon your own tasks we also have a detailed documentation or a developer's guide which you can use to write your own tasks it should be fairly easy okay very good the next question is, how long would it take to set up a three SAP SID system? Setting up the first system takes some time because that is the time that is the uh, system which we will use uh, to understand your landscape, uh, to understand your existing process. So setting up the first system always takes some time. But once you have your first system set up, once we understand your process, all we can or we should do is duplicate the configuration so you could just go ahead and create multiple configurations on the fly which would be fairly fast starting the second system but first system takes time but to answer your question crisply it would take uh, anything between three to five days depending upon the complexity of your system okay thank you another question is how would you size the staging area in traditional sense um, the customer is asking here, this is a share directory or does this require a staging area on both the target and the source? And the I was looking at the... Sorry, sorry yeah, Monty, go ahead. Are the exports, are, they are stored on the uh, master server, so all the data that you have uh, exported, they get stored on the master server, which is typically your target system. You could create your own file system or we could use uh, an existing file system provided we have enough space in that file system and that file system has CDADM permissions. Okay. Another question that came in is what needs to be taken into account to upgrade from version 2.1.7 to 2.2.5? I think this is an existing customer asking this question, Ramzi. The from from going from two two seven uh, two one seven yeah, to two two one seven to two two five yeah yeah from going from two one seven to two two five uh, two two five has lot of uh, changes in the structure of the tasks so what we are we we have done is we have uh, if if there are tasks provided by Livelle the tool would automatically convert the tasks but if you have returned your own tasks then we would have to make a session and show you what exactly have to be converted. But uh, the best but the best suggestion I would make is to uh, have a uh, contact with the Libelle support team and uh, provide your configuration file so that we could gauge how much of customization you have done 
and if there is no customization, we could straight away go ahead and do an upgrade. If there is customization, custom tasks, then we are looking at changing those tasks manually for the time being. But we are working on a process where we would also provide you with a task configurator kind of template which would automatically change custom tasks which you have returned into the latest version. Okay, thank you. The last question is how can we get our hands on a evaluation version? Um, that's a question I would like to address briefly. The best is if you reach out to either Frank or myself. We would like to do evaluations together, either with Mumsy or with one of your one of his colleagues. That we schedule probably a two-day session. Maybe do one of your refreshes together with you, and use it as a opportunity to do a refresh, an actual refresh, and just do this evaluation together. So just reach out to Frank or myself. Okay, perfect. I think that's the end of our questions. I don't see any further questions that we have not answered. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank all the attendees for joining today. Thank you to my colleagues for doing the presentation and the, the uh, demonstration. Thank you to Ben and Bamsi. I hope you enjoyed it and let us know if you want us to follow up with you individually, if you want to have a demonstration or a proof of concept installation, just let us know as well. We are more than happy to schedule something for you.